Hello there, very good evening and welcome to the news tonight. I'm Tracy Shilshi and this is the show where we get you the day's top stories from India and across the world, starting with the headlines. Samajwadi Party and Congress discuss seat sharing. Party is likely to announce a manifesto and electoral pact in a day or two. But Ajit Singh led RLD says it will not be a part of the alliance. Fifteen school children killed and over 30 injured after a bus collides with a truck in Uttar Pradesh's Eta district. Eyewitnesses say the accident took place due to fog. Death toll expected to rise. In the face of the rising protests at Marina Beach in Chennai, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister O Paniraselvam meets Prime Minister Narendra Modi, fails to get an assurance on an ordinance lifting the ban on the bull taming sport. An outgoing US President Barack Obama speaks to Narendra Modi, thanks him for the partnership that helped enhance relations between India and America. Our top story amid reports that the RLD has refused to be a part of the alliance with the Samajwadi Party in Uttar Pradesh. Both the Congress and the Samajwadi Party say that they will announce a formal pact soon. Reports say that a faction of the Apna Dal has also shown interest in an alliance with the SP Congress combined. Political parties in Uttar Pradesh are racing against time to firm up electoral alliances in the state. With the first phase of elections barely three weeks away, the Samajwadi Party and the Congress have announced their agreement could be finalised in a day or two. However, suspense continues on the potential third element in the equation. The RLD led by Ajit Singh says it's yet to receive a proposal for an electoral pact. Samajwadi Party ne koi baat nahi ki. Samajwadi Party ne karib do mahine pehle Shopal Yadav ji aaye the. Mulayam Singh ji ne baat ki thi. Abhi ek hafte pehle Akhilesh Yadav ne bhi baat ki. पर उसके बाद कोई गठबंधन की बात नहीं कहते हैं कि भाई कांग्रेस बात करें हम हम हमसे किसी ने आज तक बात ही नहीं की है समाजवादी पार्टी लीडर्स आर हाउएवर रूलिंग आउट एन अलायंस विद द आरएलडी द पार्टी इज थिंकिंग इज दैट इट कुड एलिनेट द मुस्लिम कम्युनिटी ऑन अकाउंट ऑफ द मुजफ्फरनगर इशू एंड इट्स स्ट्रेंज रिलेशंस विद द जाट कम्युनिटी कांग्रेस का साथ बातचीत भी हो चुका है अलायंस केवल कांग्रेस का साथ होगा देखिए उत्तर प्रदेश का जो विधानसभा चुनाव 2017 में बहुत महत्वपूर्ण चुनाव है सारा हिंदुस्तान देख रहा है उत्तर प्रदेश में क्या होगा और हम लोग का लक्ष्य है केवल 2017 नहीं 2019 में ही है इसलिए कांग्रेस का साथ हम लोग गठबंधन किया कि दो में सत्ता पुनराय अखिलेश जी मुख्यमंत्री बनेंगे Both the Samajwadi Party and the Congress are in talks for the seats their candidates will contest. Sources say that while the SP is expected to contest over 300 seats, the Congress is likely to be offered about 85 seats. The party, however, wants the number to be pushed up to 100. The other sticking point is a list of non-negotiable seats. While the SP has a list of 290 such seats, the Congress has 15. Sources say a decision could be announced by Friday. Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. Now to Uttarakhand, where the BJP is facing a revolt ever since it announced a list for the upcoming assembly elections in the state. Dissatisfied party leaders in all assembly seats where the Congress rebels were given tickets are now openly protesting against the BJP top brass. Here's a report. BJP workers on Thursday raised slogans at the party headquarters in Uttarakhand. They are protesting in support of BJP leaders who have been denied tickets by the party. The current resentment is due to the induction of several influential Congress leaders into the party right before the assembly polls. Bharatiya Janata Party ke karikarta ne bhot lambe samay se yahan pe kam kar rahe hain, sangarsh kiya hai, aur is rajya ke hit ke baare mein sochte hain. Aise karikartaon pe party ko pina bichar karna chahiye. Mere kahan hai ham jaise log bhot se log hain, jinhone sangathan ne bhot lambe samay se 30 vars tak kam kare, mujse aur bhi senior hain, bhot achhe karikarta hain, imandar karikarta hain, dedicated worker hain, jo Uttarakhand ke जन सरोकारों से जुड़े हुए हैं कि जब जनता के द्वारा जनता का शासन है जब जनता चाहती है उनको टिकट चाहिए तो उनको टिकट क्यों नहीं मिल रहा है है कि नहीं है विरोध चवाली को टिकट की जनता का जब पूरे उनके पक्ष में तो विरोध चवाली जिंदाबाद जिंदाबाद देर आर एटलीस्ट ट्वेंटी फोर ऑफ सेवेंटी असेंबली सीट पर स्ट्रॉन्ग टिकट कंटेंडर्स फेस डिसअपॉइंटमेंट द सिचुएशन इन दी उत्तराखंड कांग्रेस इज नो डिफरेंट रेजिंग एंड फाइटिंग हैज पुट द पार्टी ऑन द बैकफुट 
However, party leaders deny reports of a rift. कमियां रही होगी तो सुधार किया जाएगा लेकिन 10 के 10 जो लोग गए हैं वो अति महत्वाकांक्षी लोग हैं उनमें से कांग्रेस पार्टी ने हर एक को बनाने का काम किया भयंकर आरोप लगने के बाद भी गंभीर आरोप लगने के बाद भी उनको मंत्री बनाने का काम किया सीएलपी लीडर बनाने का काम किया मात्र 2.5 साल के संसदीय अनुभव में बगुना जी को चीफ मिनिस्टर बनाने का काम किया यशपाल आर्य जी को कांग्रेस ने उत्तर प्रदेश में भी टिकट दिया the decision making process isn't going to be a cakewalk for the BJP. According to sources, Congress rebels who've joined the BJP have an upper hand as far as tickets are concerned. While the party has reported in fighting, senior leaders also do not want to disappoint the existing leaders. Navikram's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And now let's get you some more updates from the poll bound states in Porpuri. The Amadmi Party submitted its reply to the Election Commission on its notice alleging a model code violation. The notice was over party chief Arun Kejriwal's remarks in Goa where he allegedly promoted bribery. The EC called it prima facie a violation of the model code. Kejriwal had reportedly asked voters to accept money from BJP and the Congress but only vote for the Amadmi Party. Scrutiny of nominations for the Goa Assembly elections took place today. Wednesday was the last day to file the papers. 405 nominations have been received so far for the polls. The last day of withdrawal for candidature is the 21st of January. Voting for 40 Assembly seats in Goa will take place in a single phase on the 4th of February. The BJP is in power in Goa for the last 10 years and this time it faces a challenge from the Ahmad Party and Congress in the coastal state. Scrutiny of nominations also for the Punjab Assembly elections ended today. Wednesday was in fact the last day for filing papers. 1,941 candidates filed papers this time. Navjot Singh Sidhu, Captain Amrinder Singh and Bhagwant Maan were among the 1,040 candidates who filed the nominations on the last day. Polling will take place on the 4th of February. While Congress is going alone on 117 seats, the ruling Shiromani Akali Dal and its ally BGB will contest 94 and 23 seats respectively. However, counting of votes will be held on the 11th of March. Filing of nominations kicked off for the first phase of polling in UP to be held on the 11th of February. The first phase will cover 73 assembly constituencies spanning 15 districts in western UP, including Agra, Shamli, Muzaffar Nagar, Bakhwat, Neerat, Eta, Ghaziabad, Hapur, Gautam Buddh Nagar and Firozabad. Nomination papers of the candidates could be filed till the 24th of January. Scrutiny of nominations will be on the 25th of January. The candidates can then withdraw their nominations till the 27th of January. More national news now in Tamil Nadu Chief Minister O Panirasselva met Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi today to urge an ordinance for lifting the ban on the controversial bull taming sport Jallikattu. However, not giving clear indication over the ordinance, the Prime Minister said that the centre is supportive of the steps taken by the state. Meanwhile, more celebrities, including A.R. Rahman, have voiced their support with the protesters who continue to gather at Marina Beach in Chennai. On the third day of the pro Jolly Cutter protests at the Marina Beach, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister O. Panir Selvam arrived in Delhi to urge the Prime Minister to consider an ordinance to lift the ban on the bull taming sport. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, however, indicated that the centre will not issue an ordinance stating that the case is still under consideration by the Supreme Court. Get any assurance from Prime Minister? You met Prime Minister. Any assurances by him on Jali Kattu, sir? Wait, wait. Sir, has wait, central wait. government wait. promised that they will be uh, coming, they will bring this ordinance? Wait, good news, sir. Come. Sir, good wait, news wait. will come. Wait, wait. Sir, you are saying good news will come. Wait, wait. Are you suggesting that central yes, government has agreed for an ordinance? So people are quite agitated. Yesterday also there were protests and today also. On Thursday, PMK leader Anbhumani Ramadas joined a dharna outside Prime Minister Narendra Modi's residence seeking the ordinance on Jallikat. We want an ordinance immediately for Jallikat for Tamil Nadu. These are sentiments of 9 crore people of Tamil Nadu. 5,000 years we have been following Jallikat. Suddenly if some law can't just cancel everything and say ban everything. If there are issues, sort out the issues and conduct it. That is all we are asking. Matter is sub judice. Our brother clearly told that 
the government is for delicate we are in favor of delicate but at the same time we are waiting for the delicate so our honorable prime minister has told that we are for delicate we are waiting for the opportunity While protesters feel the Paneer Selvam government is taking steps to bring back Jalikat, they say they will not leave the protest venue in Chennai till the ban is lifted. The protesters, who are mostly young students and professionals, are using social media to increase their outreach. At stake, they say, are Tamil culture and its pride. The Tamil Nadu is the uh, like a state where they follow the Pongal celebrations and all with the Jalikatta. From past few years, there was no kind of Jalikatta, but now they need it because it's their like heart and soul. They wanna do it something for them. We want to save our culture. It is coming from 5,000 years ago. It is our Jalikatta. We want Jalikatta. In recent days, it is uh, I mean 3,000 years back it has been started, and uh, nobody can stop this. And we want our rights back. Animal rights activists claim that organizers of Jallikattu drug the bulls to make them unsteady and throw chili powder in their faces to agitate them. Some the people who are protesting are not aware of what is the situation, what what is the information all about, which which basically means uh, we have a Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act 1960, which very clearly says that you cannot cause unnecessary suffering to animals. The same act also says you cannot have animal fighting. It is it is considered as an act of cruelty. Photographic evidence and the video evidence uh, uh, gathered by Animal Welfare Board of India very clearly shows that the cruelty is inherent. You cannot regulate it. I mean, eventually you have to force the bull to run out of the body vessel so that people can pounce on him. So torture is not only in terms of poking them with knife and injuring them, uh, but also inducing them fear. The mental torture is as important as uh, physical torture chief minister ho ya pradhan mantri ho in saaron ko samvidhan ne banaya hai to na hi chief minister na pradhan mantri samvidhan ke upar hai religion ho culture ho ye sari cheeze hain jo samvidhan ki jo boundaries hain unke bilkul andar hona chahiye koi nahi keh raha hai ki religious na ho lekin in har ek religious ki jo pratha hoti hai wo badalti jati hai aur yahan pe court ne bola hai use badalni chahiye Hearing the matter on Thursday the Supreme Court said the issue of protecting the agitating supporters of the bull taming sport could be raised before the Madras High Court the spontaneous uprising that has resonated across the state has so far been peaceful but authorities seem worried over the continuing arrival of more people at the marina beach with inputs from Pranav Goswami in Delhi bureau report for Rajya Sabha TV Union Minister for Electronics and Information Technology Ravi Shankar Prasad today underscored the importance of the role of the National Information Center in spearheading the digital revolution in the country addressing a function on digital india prasad announced initiatives for the NIC the function was attended by nearly 200 district level communication of officials prasad informed that in the last 2 years nearly 42 mobile phone manufacturers had invested in the country He said the distribution of digital services was a primary function that the government was taking very seriously. NIC Bharat ka takniki setu hai. Setu ka kaam kya hota hai? Jodna. A bridge is not only allows you to cross. A bridge is a larger philosophical concept. Bridging the gap bridging a divide and in that way i call you the technological bridge of india the national investigation agency on thursday said that controversial islamic preacher zakir naik's islamic research foundation has as much as 100 crores in investments in the real estate business the agency also said that 78 of naik's bank accounts are under the scanner the home ministry had last year imposed an immediate ban on the irf for 5 years under the unlawful activities prevention act the nia had filed cases against naik for allegedly promoting enmity between groups on religious and racial grounds the probe agency also raided over a dozen offices residential premises his peace tv offices and other locations besides freezing a bank account of his ngo And here are some more national news updates in nationwide. At least 15 school children have died and over 30 injured after a bus collided with a truck in Uttar Pradesh's Etta today. The victims were in the age group of 15 to 10 to 15 years. The driver of the bus was also killed. Eyewitnesses said that the accident took place due to poor visibility in the area. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi condoled the death of the children in the mishap, and officials say that the death toll is expected to rise. Jammu and Kashmir Assembly on Thursday unanimously passed a resolution for creating a conducive atmosphere for the return of Kashmiri pundits and other migrants to the valley. Former Chief Minister Omar Abdullah said that it has been 27 years since Kashmiri pundits left the valley and it is time that people should rise above party politics and pass a resolution for their return. Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao has said that his government will introduce a bill to provide 12% reservation to Muslims in the state. He said the government will also ask the centre to include the law in the constitution's ninth schedule. The 12% reservation to Muslims was a key election promise of the ruling TRS. The budget session is expected to begin next month. A Lashkar Toiba militant was killed and a policeman injured in an encounter in Bandipura district of North Kashmir. Police and counterinsurgency cell is reportedly working on a clue that the deceased is related to the outfit's Pakistan based operational commander Zakir Rahman Lakhvi. Lakhvi, remember, is wanted by the National Investigation Agency. With that, a quick break here. More news follows in a bit. Stay with us. I was involved in the development of almost all the missile systems uh, which our country is seeing, like uh, Agni series of missiles, uh, Prithvi. We are famous for making the world best missile system. So I take pride in uh, developing and uh, delivering the world super fast supersonic cruise missile called Brahmos. We wanted to enhance the capabilities of a soldier. Watch Eureka with Dr. Sudhir Mishra, CEO and MD at Brahmos Aerospace. Only on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. Let's get you some international news now. An outgoing US President Barack Obama has thanked Prime Minister Narendra Modi for his partnership that helped enhance Indo-US ties. President Obama telephoned the Prime Minister to thank him for his partnership and to review the joint efforts of cooperation including in defense, civil nuclear energy and enhanced people-to-people -people ties. Recalling his visit as the chief guest at Republic Day celebrations in 2015, the President wished Modi warm congratulations ahead of India's upcoming 68th Republic Day. And on late Wednesday night, the US President also participated in his last press conference before he handed over the reins to Donald Trump, or he hands over the reins, in fact, to Donald Trump on Friday, and expressing hope that America would be fine in the days to come. He also outlined his plans for the future, including his desire to write and not hear himself talk so much. But at my core, I think we're going to be okay. We just have to fight for it. We have to work for it and not take it for granted. And I know that you will help us do that. Thank you very much, Press Corps. Good luck. Barack Obama's parting words during his last press conference as the U.S. President. On Friday, he will hand over the baton to Donald Trump, a relative newbie in the political world, but one who stormed into this presidency with huge force. The message was full of hope, in sharp contrast to his grand visions of progressive change eight years ago that propelled him to the presidency. I worry about inequality because I think that if we are not investing in uh, making sure everybody plays a role in this economy, the economy will not grow as fast. And I think it will also lead to further and further separation uh, between us as Americans. And I, not just along racial lines. I mean, there, there are a whole bunch of folks who voted for the president-elect because they feel forgotten and disenfranchised. They feel as if they're being looked down on. They feel as if their kids aren't going to have the same opportunities uh, as they did. About his successor, Obama said that he was aware Trump may not take his advice on issues, so he would avoid weighing in on specific policy matters during his post-presidency. Uh, I want to do some writing. I want to uh, 
be quiet a little bit and, and not hear myself talk so darn much. Um, I want to sp spend precious time with my girls. So, so those are my priorities this year. But as I said before, I'm still a citizen. The outgoing president also hoped that once Donald Trump gets into office and is hit with the intricate details of governing, his thinking might shift on issues such as Obamacare and jobs. And this is something I have told him, uh, that this is a job of such magnitude that you can't do it by yourself. You are enormously reliant on a team, uh, your cabinet, your, your senior White House staff, all the way to fairly junior folks uh, in their 20s and 30s, but who are executing on significant responsibilities. And so uh, how you put a team together to make sure that uh, they're getting you the best information and they are teeing up the options from which you will ultimately make decisions, that's probably uh, uh, the most useful advice the most constructive advice that I've been able to give. Obama also dismissed the allegations of voter fraud in the U.S., saying this is what can be called fake news. These allegations have mainly come from the Republican camp. Bureau report, Rajasabha TV. Now as many as 30 people are feared dead after a hotel in central Italy was hit by an avalanche, apparently triggered by an earthquake. Rescuers battled heavy snow overnight to reach the Rigopiano Hotel. One person was pulled dead from the snow. Two were found alive, but most others appear to be still buried. The mountainous region of central Italy was hit by four earthquakes on Wednesday, while further tremors were reported overnight. A wall of snow and debris hit the hotel on Wednesday evening, just hours after four strong earthquakes had shaken central Italy. Central Italy. And now on to sports and the Australian Open men's defending champion Novak Djokovic suffered a shock defeat at the hands of world number 117 Denis Istomin in the second round. Djokovic was defeated in a five-set thriller, leaving Andy Murray as the favourite now to win the tournament. However, it was an easy outing for world number nine Rafael Nadal, who stormed into the third round with a straight sets demolition of Marcos Bagdatis. Women's world number three Agnieszka Radwanska also, also was upset in the second round. But wall number one, Serena Williams, sailed through the third round. The crowd in the Rod Laver Arena on Thursday witnessed the biggest upset of the year's first Grand Slam as defending champion and world number two Novak Djokovic was knocked out of the Australian Open in the second round. The six-time winner struggled for rhythm as he lost to world number 117 wildcard entrant Denis Istomin of Uzbekistan in five sets. After losing the first set in the tie-break, Djokovic came back strongly to win the next two, but the Uzbek won another tie-break in the fourth before stunning the 12-time Grand Slam winner with a 7-6-5-7-2-6-7-6-6-4 win. It is the first time Djokovic has lost in the second round of a Grand Slam since losing at Wimbledon in 2008. Uh, it is unreal, so to beat Novak in five sets, it's a great win, you know, and... Uh, I'm still like feel tired a little bit, and uh, I didn't expect what I'm I'm doing now. So and what I did on the court. So I like uh, the way I'm playing, and uh, I mean I feel just tired, and I don't think about the that I win the, against number two in the world. All the credits to to Dennis for playing playing amazing. And he deserved to win, uh, no doubt. He he was a better player in the clutch moments. He stepped it up and uh, played aggressive, served very well, very precise. There was not much I could do. Uh, of course, I, I was not pleased with my performance overall. But uh, you know, I have to congratulate my my opponent today. The women's singles too witnessed a shock exit as world number three Agnieszka Skaradwanska lost in the second round. The 27-year-old Polish was beaten by some aggressive tennis from Croatia's Mirjana Lucic Boroni as she lost 3-6-2-6. However, world number one Serena Williams continued her strong form to progress to the third round. The 35-year-old American who is vying for a record 23rd Grand Slam title overcame the challenge from Russia's Lucy Safarova, prevailing in straight sets 6-3, 6-4. 
but it was a disappointing day for India. Veteran Leander Pace and his Brazilian partner Andre Sa lost in the first round of the men's doubles. The Indo-Brazilian pair lost to 10th seeds Tri Huey and Max Mirne 4-6, 7-6, 6-4. Another Indian pair of Purav Raja and Divit Sharan also lost their first round match. Raja and Sharan were beaten by the French pair of Jonathan S. Reek and Fabrice Martin in a hard fought match 7 6 7 6. Bureau Report, Raja Sabha TV. And that's it on the news tonight. Thanks so much for joining us.